We all saw it sprawled across the blackboard the second we stepped into Miss Lovecraft's class. Its wingspan reached from one end of the room to the other, hovering above our heads as if it were about to pounce. Its chalk scrawled claws looking ready to grab up an unsuspecting student and fly away. What is that ungodly thing? My best friend, Jimmy Pickman, asked. It looks like an octopus, I replied. Miss Lovecraft had scribbled its name over its doom-shaped head, beckoning the class to chant this creature's nauseating nomenclature. Repeat after me, children. This is... The Vagina! I shuddered at the sound its name made within my mouth, whispering it with the rest of the students. It seemed to seep out from over my tongue, the syllables all soft and moist, as if it had just drudged itself up from some sordid portion of my stomach, buried for centuries under the muck of my meals. Rising up towards my teeth on a tide of bile. Now, class, all girls are born with a vagina. The vagina is hollow of the uterus. Shown here, which is where the fertilized ovum develops into a fetus. Suddenly, it struck me. The more we all called out its name, repeating our teacher's incantation for this feminine effigy. The more I noticed how all the girls in the class had begun to shift within their seats. Norween Dunwich popped her Habba Baba right into my ear. The air hissing out from that gummy bubble like a dying man's final exhale. She had been voraciously taking notes recording every pagan name her high priestess called out. I peered underneath her desk, only to discover her legs spread wide open, fanning her knees back and forth. Something had awoken within her! Something was lurking under the murk of her skirt, veiled behind the pleats of her school uniform. Oh, this wasn't sex, Anne. No, we were taking part in something much darker than our normal curriculum. This was a ritual, an invocation of evil. Looking back at the blackboard, that powdery rendition seemed to come alive. Its fallopian tubes undulating across the wall like tentacles reaching out for me. There was something so hypnotic to its flickering, those ovaries pulsing in a brilliant pink and green. My eyes raced around the room, the sudden shock of realization dawning on me. This quivering deity that Miss Lovecraft had mapped out on the chalkboard was within women! Women everywhere! These ancient beings have been amongst us boys all along, hidden within the depths of our female classmates. Now, class, let's move on to the male sexual orgasms. Bear in mind that I had not known such a thing existed within me. To say that a mental shock was the cause of what I inferred, that Last straw of sanity snapping as Miss Lovecraft took her chalk and etched a most heinous hieroglyphic across the blackboard is to ignore the simplest bit of my experience. Maybe a madhouse would be as good of any a place to save me now. A doctor could erase this profane image from my brain forever, but I found myself staring at none other than him who is not to be named. The mighty one-eyed messenger 
The goat with a thousand young! Stop snickering, children! I'll send you all to the office if you can't act like mature adults! Now, repeat after me. This is the penis! You must believe me, Principal Peters. I have certain evidence that monstrous things do indeed live within the dark corners of man that have yet to be explored by my hands. Throbbing, pulsating creatures that inhabit a space unfamiliar to this particular seventh grader. And as God is my witness, how I wish to resist this transformation. I was the caterpillar combating its own cocoon. Looking around the room, I realized I was not alone in this chrysalis state. The rest of the class was undergoing the same change. A look of utter horror frozen on everyone's face. Locking onto the eyes of Larissa Innsmouth, I was suddenly aware of the disconnected sounds inside my mind. The creature hidden within her was attempting to communicate with me. Its sole mode of speech were a series of thought waves transmitted through its clitoral antenna. Even now, these beasts talked within their tombs, sending their telepathy out from beyond the cotton lining of all the girls' underwear. <laughs> the panic was suddenly lessening within me. I was beginning to feel queerly drawn towards the unknown sea depths of my female classmates. I suddenly felt the compulsion to swim towards that brooding reef of newly grown pubic hair. Diving into that black abyss <laughs> Miss Lovecraft was responsible for introducing us boys to the female reproductive system. Her incantation had unlocked our libidos. <laughs> Discs together, we created an altar in which to enact the rites of passage. The class made sacrifices out of ourselves, offering our bodies up to our idols. Miss Lovecraft continued to point towards the orifices of our gods, while the student body had of ungodly proportions. <laughs> Hail, young Sagaf, the mighty vagina. Praise to the pit of Shagoths. <laughs> Glory to the great messenger Cthulhu. Yagoth, the cyclopic worm. <laughs> Oh, you mustn't think I'm mad, Principal Peters. There's good reason, God knows. I'm lucky enough to still have a scrap of sanity left within me. I have bared witness to tears that come from beyond the body. Monstrous things that harbor themselves inside the shells of men like you and I. The rest of the seventh grade may not believe me, but later my peers will weigh each statement I made as I was dragged down the hole, correlating my words with the known facts, no matter how raving until the entire class asks themselves how they could have ever have believed otherwise. But until then, I myself found nothing but madness in these wild tales that I have acted upon. 
Even now I ask myself whether I was misled or whether or not I am mad at all. But the second my knees buckled upwards, hitting the underbelly of my desk, the class all turned around to face me. Even Miss Lovecraft was staring at me, her mouth hanging wide open, the look on her face thickening into utter horror. The second she realized my pants were now crumpled up at my ankles, my hands hidden below the desktop. Strips of mother of pearl stretched along the floor as if some slimy beast had been released from within me. The residue of its escape shining over the linoleum. Thank you.